100 years is such a long time. One country could achieve its independence from Japan and become one of the leading countries in the world. And one country increases its life expectancy from 47 years old to 80 years old. In addition, the height of the world's highest building increases from 324 meters tall to 828 meters tall, which is almost triple during the century. Hi everyone, my name is Joan Park, and I'm from the College of Food and Nutrition. Today, it's a great honor for me to speak in front of you. I'm going to tell you about what our life would be in 100 years from now. What would it be like in 2113? Some of you might have a positive point of view, while others have a negative view of it. Then let's start from the negative point of view. As many people can expect, there would be a serious environmental problems. Many people would not be able to breathe without masks due to the air pollution, and it would be also hard for any crops to grow properly. Also, the water contamination would cause the fish in our oceans or lakes to die, which would lead to the lack of food supply. The, food, the population growth would be unsustainable because more and more people would die of starvation. Also, the problem of food distribution inequality would be given, and this inequality of the food distribution in the world could cause a conflict between nations, which could be called as a World War III. And if, this, and if this war includes any nuclear weapon, it would lead to the final extermination of our humanity. What do you think of this future? Is it really inevitable? Well, maybe yes, or maybe no. But let's just move on to our positive future. Humans are naturally optimistic, aren't we? So, in this utopian future, you don't need to worry about any environmental problems. If we keep up with our sustainable development, our globe would be even more purified than now. The food problems, don't worry about it. The population growth would be matched or exceeded by the efficient farming or by the efficient technologies such as vertical farming, hydroponics, or any other recycling development. So, in this ideal world, there would be no national conflict between countries regarding the food supply. There would be no World War III, nor the World War Z. <laughs> and there would be no extermination of the humanity. Can you see these big differences between the two futures? Which one do you prefer? The positive one, of course. Then, what should we do to bring about this rosy vision of the future and switch off the gloomy one? It depends. On our eyes. What I'm telling you is to have a relentless concern on our present day issues. For example, if there is any development going on, you should always check if it is considering our environment, or for the human good, or for our universe. Do these things seem too broad for you to practice in your everyday life? Then you must be misunderstanding my point. I'm telling you to just Constantly keep your eyes on these issues. <laughs> Be an eye Participate in a variety of study groups and check daily news carefully. It may seem so trivial or insignificant first, but it can have a much more power than we use what we think. In one study, when there was a one picture in front of the classroom, the student turned out to study harder than usual. Now, Imagine the power of the numerous eyes on global issues. It will have a terrific impact. To summarize finally, I've told you that there could be either utopian or dystopian future depending on our eyes. Thomas Jefferson once said that no government ought to be without any censors, emphasizing the role of the guardians. In any group, a successful one must be accompanied with everyone serving the role of monitor or a constant watcher, and our goal is no exception. Pay attention to our present day issues. 
It may be the omitting 10 and must do. If you keep caring about our present day issues and for our future generations, the bright, shiny, and rosy future will definitely be ours. This is the end of my presentation, and thank you so much for listening.